Okay team, we're gonna go for a forage for some wild edible soon, but before we do that, we're gonna have to make ourselves, it's a very technical tool, a good old fashioned digging stick. For early humans, first things they use, digging stick. The Aztecs built pyramids and stuff like that with digging sticks, so let's fashion one up. All right, and see here, we've got a, yeah, just a stick really, so we'll go in that. Any old stick will loop. And uh, let's get him fashioned into a digging stick. But it's gonna need some cleaning up. So uh, let's get into it. Generally like it about as long as my arm, a bit longer, but we'll get this fella cleaned up. Right, oh team, you can see in about three minutes, we've made a nice effective digging stick. We've got that nice flat edge there and a bit of a round chamfer at the bottom. That'll be good for prying up any tubers, roots for uh, wild edibles. And yeah, it's just handy to have a stick in your hand pretty much at all times. It makes you feel safe. I don't know what it is, but uh, handy to have. There we go. Quick, effective digging stick. We'll clean the end of it up just so we get a nice rounded point, but it's a nice solid stick. Beauty. Right, O team, we can see here all these reeds, cattail, bulrush, kumbungee, whatever you call it, greater reed mace, I think is another word for it, but uh, it's like a supermarket of food right there. All these long uh, reeds with a little sausage looking fluff pot on top. That, my friends, is good old fashioned bush tucker. Let's have a look. Keep your eyes out for tiger snakes while we're here. Okay, now a simple way of doing it is I generally like to fold back. We go down and give it a good old fashioned yank. It'd be quite hard to get out. But there we go. And that's just the reed itself. There's also tubers that go underground, and that's where the money is. But we'll just demonstrate the reed today. This time is of the essence. See, that's the reed there. Okay, team, as we can see, this is the uh, bulrush or cattail reed found in almost every dam you'll ever see. But a uh, good source of bush tucker, good source of carbs, which is quite hard to replicate in the wild. But that whole tube going off the bottom there, full of starch. Good carbohydrates, give you some energy, 100% edible. They are edible raw, but are far more palatable when cooked. Also, the shoot here. We'll trim him up and there's a nice little tasty morsel in the center. I'll demonstrate that to you now. Okay, Tim, what we're gonna do is just trim that fella off. We don't wanna waste him, look at that. All that there, all that good starch locked in there. Good, good tucker. I'm gonna just trim the end off here, cleaned up. Like that. Then we're gonna peel all this stuff here at the end. The end's good for weaving baskets and all that, like, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. Good cordage, you can make good cordage out of it. We're just going to trim this part in here. And get to the little sweet spot that's in the middle. Let's peel off these outer layers. Clean them up. Like that. And that whole thing there is 100% edible. We can get, peel a bit more off, get that sort of woody husky outside but it's got that sweet middle it's kind of comparable to asparagus cross cucumber but very nutritious and very good and a staple diet for a lot of the local indigenous tribes around here they love this stuff i think one french explorer wrote they were very partial to it and they ate it in great magnitudes and got in supreme condition of it so Many uses, many uses for the Wonga, Kambudgee, Cattail, Greater Reed Mace, Bulrush, whatever, but a perfect, perfect source of uh, food. And also building materials, make mats, ropes, all that kind of stuff out of it. So very useful plant. Okay team, not uh, all bush tucker is native. This is the infamous Scottish blackberry. But one man's noxious weed, 
is another man's delicious edible fruit, the good old fashioned blackberry. And this time of the year, they are absolutely everywhere. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Good source of vitamin C. Um, yeah, sugars make you feel good. Also, the younger new leaves, which we'll try and find. Okay, these light colored uh, new leaves here on the blackberry, they are also a perfect salad green. Mmm, throwing a soup or something. They're a little tough, so they're much better, pardon me, it's much better boiled, so they can be a little dry, but good, also boiled into a tea. They kind of have an odd, kind of similar to blackberry taste, but kind of a bit more lemony. Look at all these beautiful berries sitting right there. Wouldn't have a hard time picking a lot of berries in a short amount of time. And it's food that doesn't run away. Perfect amount of sugar you need. But uh, all the leaves are edible, but these larger style ones are very tough. And they're not very tasty, but if you need to eat them, you can. The blackberry. Okay, team, another edible plant we have here is the common saw hedge. It's found in swampy areas like this near the Kumbungee, you know, them sort of low-lying wetlands. And they are also edible, but you do have to be careful when pulling them out because they don't get the name saw hedge for no reason. And they are quite sharp, but, excuse the dodgy camera work, but uh, that part there, the inner part of this white uh, base of the stem, is edible kind of a bland tasting there is a similar pea taste um kind of like a frozen pea really but they are they can be quite bland so not my go-to but it is edible probably chopped up thrown in a soup would make a good hearty addition you know good starches it does have its uses but yeah just be careful when harvesting them because these uh its shoots are quite sharp also has a nickname cutty grass because it cuts it's also identified by the brown seed pods and ones that are red but yeah not my go-to but yes another edible plant right oh team another edible wild edible plant we have here is the common dandelion everything on this uh, little plant is edible it's actually weed is edible the from the flowers down to the tubers down below and the leaves leaves have a very similar taste kind of bitter very bitter actually but kind of like a rock a bit of a good salad green but they are edible um, when consuming dandelion just be careful because it is a diuretic so if you're eating a lot of dandelion make sure you are drinking a lot of water but being a diuretic it does have medicinal properties i.e helpful with kidney stones it's good for old people because it flushes the system and it's also high in vitamins and minerals there you go the dandelion let's uh let's dig him up take our digging stick Using a levering action, you can see, oh, that's actually quite a good sized one. That washed up there is the root, which boiled then roasted is absolutely delicious. Kind of has like a parsnip or a carroty taste to it, a little bit bitter, but roasted and ground up, and the juice from this or the tea from it is actually a good coffee substitute. Doesn't have caffeine in it, but does taste somewhat like coffee. Full of starch, full of vitamins, full of minerals, and very easy gathering and abundance. There we go, common dandelion. Righto team, this has to be another one of my favorite wild edibles. It is the plantain. I think there's uh, roughly, I don't know, something like above or around 24 species of native plantain in Australia. They do grow worldwide, but you're easily recognisable by the little seed pod that grows above here. It easily, or should easily pop off, you know, when you make a little gun when you're a kid. But these are amazing because they're both medicinal and very, very edible. They're high in vitamin A, C, and K, as well as iron, very rich in iron. Uh, they can be mashed up into a paste, which is good for wounds, made into a tea that's very relaxing very nutritious it even is said to calm 
nicotine withdrawal if made into a tea and held in the mouth but that would be because of its anti-anxiety properties um it says here french botan uh french botanist said uh this and to quote a salad furnished by the leaves of this plant which are very tender was highly relished by all the company so a very useful plant to whack in a stew uh you know just a leafy green it's kind of tastes similar to baby spinach and abundant absolutely everywhere so yeah a common weed everyone will have these in their garden but a very very useful plant and yeah highly regarded it's also good for your kidneys uh you know your whole urinary tract and your lymphatic uh lymphatic system so very cleansing medicinal and edible so your old two in one plantain weed very very useful plant so as you can see team after 15 minutes of hardcore gathering we've got ourselves quite the meal already and there's triple where the amount where this came from this is only three dandelions the kabunji roots and a handful of blackberries so within here we've taken care of a fair bit of our caloric needs for the day and that's 15 minutes of quick gathering so if you know what you're looking for you can find yourself the basis of a feed add a bit of protein a fish rabbit you know a couple of yabbies a couple of craze or some shellfish to all this you got yourself some makings of a very nutritious soup it should cover all your daily intakes vitamin c starches medicinal properties vitamin a iron and here's some good complex starches so there you go there's food to be found wherever you look they say food's in short supply but i say uh knowledge is in short supply so there we go wild edible gathering 101